understand the Battle of the Marathon, we must first go through a bit of background. The story begins in 499 BCE, when the Ionian Revolt began. Ionia, a Greek city-state, revolted against the rule of the Persian Empire. The result lasted six years, just enough time for Athens and Eritrea to annoy the Persian king, Darius I. They did this by supporting the rebels and sending an army to destroy the Persian city of Sardis. The Persian expedition to destroy these cities was not just for revenge, however, but also to reaffirm control in the West. You see, by destroying this culturally important city, Athens, a democracy, challenged the authority of the Persian Empire, a monarchist power. Because Darius I only gained power by usurping the throne in 522, he could not allow this challenge. The armies he assembled, led by Datis and Artaphernes, consisted of 26,000 professional soldiers who came from all across the massive empire on 600 ships. According to an inscription on Darius' tome, 30 ethnic groups were presented in this army. Before subjugating Eritrea and Athens, the Persian fleet was first to capture a number of Greek city-states on the islands of the Aegean Sea the most important of which were Naxos and Delos, to create a supply line and also a load of propaganda. After brutally suppressing the stubborn resistance at Naxos and enslaving all of its inhabitants, the Persian fleet sailed to Delos, which surrendered without a fight. Before continuing to Eritrea, Datis, a Persian general, made sacrifices to the Greek god Apollo. Now I know what you're thinking. Why would a Persian general give sacrifices to a Greek god? That makes no sense. Well, back then, people did not only believe in their gods, they also believed in everyone else's gods. It was sort of like a Zeus protects you, while a Hura Mazda protects me sort of thing. And before invading someone else, you always want to try and get on their god's good side. By leaving Delos intact, the Persians sent a clear message. Surrender and you will be spared. Resist and you will be utterly destroyed. Eritrea, however, ignored this. And it was utterly destroyed. One city down, one to go. They sailed to Marathon, 40 kilometers or 25 miles away from Athens, where they began deploying their entire force. The Athenians responded quickly, sending an army of 10,000 soldiers led by 11 generals. Their pole march, or leader, named Callimachus, who was reinforced by 1,000 soldiers from Plataea. An important Greek figure, Miltides, took part in this battle. The Greeks were at a massive disadvantage. Unlike the Persians, they had no archers or cavalry. The Athenians asked Sparta for help, and Sparta agreed to send aid, but not right away because they were celebrating a religious holiday. Despite the Persian army outnumbering the Greeks more than 2 to 1, the Persians did not want to attack. Because the two armies did not want to attack each other, they simply stood there for 8 days straight. Though the Greeks considered retreating to the safety of Athens' walls, they decided against it. A large political movement was growing in the city that wanted to turn the city over to the Persians, and a Greek retreat would only help fuel the anti-war sentiment. A decisive Greek victory would be needed to silence these Persian sympathizers. The delay helped the Greeks, because every day the way continued, Spartan reinforcements drew closer, and the Persians had little food to keep their large army fed. What broke the weight was uncertain, but we do know that it was the Greeks who attacked the Persians, and the Persian cavalry was not present. Where the Persian horses went, or why the Greeks left their defensive positions, we do not know. We do know what happened next. Miltiades thinned out the smaller Greek army to match the length of the Persian line, with the Greek sides being thicker to protect the flanks, and then he ordered an attack. The Greeks began to march, but when they got into the range of enemy archers, they broke into a run, surprising the Persians. Because of their heavy armor, large shields, and fast speed, the Persian arrows hardly made a dent in the rapidly advancing Greek force. When the two armies came into contact with each other, the Persians pushed back the Greeks in the center, because of the thinner Greek line. However, the Persians advanced too quickly, and after defeating the enemy soldiers in front of them, the Greek flanks encircled and destroyed whatever was left of the Persian army, with the survivors scrambling to get on departing Persian ships. The battle left 6,400 Persian casualties, while the Greeks lost 192 men. Pathetic. However, they did take out Callimachus. The Spartans arrived the next day, where they toured the battlefield, congratulated the Athenians, killed some remaining Persians, and finally went back home. The remainder of the Persian fleet sailed to attack a defenseless Athens, forcing their army to march through the night to make it back home. They arrived just in time, and as the sun rose, the Persians saw that they were toast, instantly sailing back home without even trying to fight. Despite conquering new territories, the war was humiliating for Persia, 
and Athens rose to prominence in the Greek world. Legend says that after the battle, the victorious army sent a runner to the city, who declared the victory to prevent the pro-Persian faction from gaining control over Athens when they saw the Persian fleet arriving. After running 25 miles to Athens and declaring the victory, he immediately died of exhaustion. To celebrate this, the marathon race was established. So the big question is, why did the Persians lose despite having a larger and better trained army? Perhaps Greek morale was too high, or maybe it was because the Greeks themselves were high. I like to think it's due to the power of democracy, a revolutionary system that protects the people, is respected because of its humility and effective through its diplomacy and keeps the peace and harmony within the nation and the world. Or maybe Datus just didn't make enough sacrifices.